Erica Land, and welcome to One Step Beyond You, home of motivation and inspiration. You guys know that each week I bring you different topics that will inspire, inspire, and motivate you onto the next level of your life. This week we're going to be talking about eight things that we want to take into 2020. I'm so excited this morning, you guys, because we just celebrated an awesome Christmas. How was your Christmas? How was your Christmas? Merry Christmas to you guys. And now we about to go into a wonderful 2020. Uh, good morning, Latasha. How are you this morning? Happy New Year, darling. <laughs> uh, last week, we had touched on 10 things that we want to leave behind in 2019 and we don't want to carry into 2020. But this morning, we're going to talk about eight things that we are going to carry into 2020. But before we get started, I want you guys to make sure that you hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And also, there is a new button that I added. If you guys are on One Step Beyond You on Facebook, there's a button up at the top that says Booking. You can book yourself on my show. Now, for this year, for 2020, I, I'm, I'm up on technology. You guys don't have to call me. You can go right to the button. Hit the Booking button. It's right above where I am now on the One Step Beyond You page. And you can book yourself it asks you a series of questions of things that I'm going to need to know, and you book you can book yourself on my One Step Beyond You Live. How does that sound, you guys? <laughs> so I'm looking to see more people hit that booking button, and you guys come on, be a part of 2020, because I want to share some of your awesome, phenomenal stories in 2020 so people can be inspired and motivated to see how you do things, which will encourage them on how they're going to do things, right? <laughs> So hit that booking button. <laughs> so first thing that I want to take into 2020, and I hope you guys want to take into 2020, is change your morning routine. So for me, my morning routine is I get up, I light my candles, and I pray. Between 30 to 45 minutes, um, I'm in just total solitude. Because I find that that gets my day uh, what it is that balances me out for the day, that sets my tone, sets my mind, and I just had an opportunity to have a fair exchange with God. A lot of people are energy flow people. They, they, they. Um, you wanna, you wanna focus on where your energy goes today. What do you want your energy this year to be about? Uh, a better job, a better relationship, better health, better home. Anything is possible if you are willing to focus on what you want and take action towards it. So one activity, again, like I said, I pray in the morning, I light my candles and I have a fair exchange with God. But you can spend the first 10 minutes of your day deciding where you want your, where you want to focus your energy and not on Instagram. Some people, um, when you first wake up in the morning, you go straight to that cell phone, Instagram, Facebook, whatever. Take care of yourself first. Get yourself in line with God right in the morning. Focus your energy so that the rest of your day can be the best day. But if you start your day out going straight to social media, sometimes you might wake up and see something that you don't want to see or is not your mind and your body is not ready for. It. So it 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 messes up your focus. It sends your focus in where um and where where Instagram wants you to be and not where God wants you to be, where he wants you to be aligned with the day, right? <laughs> Um, the next thing is I want you to make a weekly list every Sunday. What needs to be done? What goals do you have? What calls to make? Organize your week every Sunday night. So already on Monday, you know what you got to do. Don't pack your, don't pack your calendar too tight. And now I was a victim of that. 
have wiggle room for the unexpected emergency and things. So that's definitely something I'm going to take in 2020. I remember my first coach has said, dang, Erica, your schedule is so tight. You don't have room for anything else. But I was like, I got to get it. I got to get it. Well, heck, I didn't even schedule time for me to sleep. <laughs> Oh, you remember we talked about that last week when I would be so tired, I just would, I would just be loopy in the morning. So now I schedule time for me to go to bed at a decent hour. I'm not up on the phone caking all in the middle of the night. <laughs> uh, the old school, you guys know, you guys know what that means. But um, even when I start my day in the morning, I... Um, I, I do put just enough so that I give myself a chance to, to have a rest. And even on my calendar, when my clients are allowed to schedule themselves, I give myself a rest period in between opposed to going from one appointment to the next or one thing to the next. Just allow me to get my mind right, right? And, um, and just like my producer, <laughs> I'm laughing because he is super tired this morning. And he's supposed to be uh, doing his job, putting the live in people's inbox this morning. <laughs> you guys, I wish you guys could see what I see behind the camera. It's phenomenal. It just makes my day. So sometimes when I'm super happy, that's because there's things going on around me. And, um, and I'm still focused on giving you guys all my attention. <laughs> So again, you want to make a weekly list of, of what you want to do that week. You know how we all have goals, that bigger goals, monthly goals, yearly goals, you know, five-year goals, 10-year goals. But every week, start every week with something simple. What are my goals for the week? What is, what is it that I want to get accomplished for the week? So that's something that you should try. Every Sunday, sit down and write down what you have to do. So when you get into the rat race on Monday morning and you're busy doing this, you're like, okay, oh, I know I had to um, schedule some doctor's appointments. I know I had to, some things that I had to do. And so, uh, again, make your list every Sunday. Um, and we talked about change your morning routine. Um, you know, we're going to start with getting our mind right and getting our prayers together, but you want to change your morning, morning routine, meaning you want to organize your finances and create at least the draft or a budget for 2020. So these are, this one is for those business owners or people, uh, who is looking to make a difference in your business in 2020. Um, organize your finances, draft the budget so you know what you you need to spend or you want to spend in 2020 opposed to just jumping out here, spending money. Then when you exceed your budget, you're like, oh my God, I didn't make a profit because you didn't stick to your budget. And if you decided to go over your budget, you knew how much you can go over your budget. Uh, you, you knew that beforehand, how much you can go over your budget. And you also know how much that's going to cost, cut into your profit opposed to getting to December 30, 31st and like, oh my God, we didn't make any profit for um, 2020. So that is something that you want to think about. I actually think that the mid-year is the best time to start. So most people think that at the end of the year is when you start making plans for 2020. But in the business world, some people start in July to start making plans for 2020. And um, from what I'm told, that a lot of the quarter starts in October. People get ready for uh, in October for 2020. Because I remember when I was... Um, approaching a couple of friends that own companies and I was like I, I want you guys to um, you know give a donation for Christmas for the the unfortunate and they was like well we've already had our Christmas budget we knew in January what we were going to give uh, in, in that particular year for Christmas and so then that taught me okay well I got to start the year before before I start when I start going to these companies asking for um, donations for that following year and so that's just put you up ahead again up ahead of the game sometimes you can't wait till the last minute to do something and meaning the last minute will be January 1st of that year you got to start a year ahead to, to focus on that new year I hope that makes sense for you um, so in July you guys probably know how much you'll be earning the next six months and that um, will make you aware of how much money you will be spending and so it gives you an option to know how much you're going to save, how much you're going to invest, everything that you're going to do in 2020, you will already know in 2019. 
So having all of these factors in mind will also allow you to look at the bigger picture and understand whether you should be asking for a raise, start a side hustle, cut back on major or unnecessary expenses. That makes sense to me. And so I knew, I can speak from my own personal experience, I knew what I had to do. And when I got into a tight, I had to scale back on everything. I mean, I even had to start doing my own hair. <laughs> People think, right, because you wear wigs, and, and we talk about, you know, me wearing wigs, because you wear wigs, um, and my wigs were short, so I didn't wear wigs like wigs like long down my back. I wore short wigs because I knew I had a lot of hair, but I didn't want to cut my hair. However, it is and it is expensive to wear wigs because they only last a short amount of time unless you go and spend five and six hundred dollars on a wig that you can wear a lot. However, um, that is an expense that I had to cut back on. That way, I can focus my finances and my energy on other areas in my business and still maintain my, my home life as well as my business life. Because many of you who are entrepreneurs, when you're in that first five years of getting your business off the ground, there's a lot of sacrifices that you have to make. But what's most important is that you're making those sacrifices for the good of your business so that it can grow. And the best sacrifice that you can make is knowing what you're going to do in your business six months ahead. So if you know that you want to invest in something major that will put your business to the next level, then you take six months and you begin to save for that. So you know how some people come at you and they're like, I got this great deal, I got this great thing, and you like, that's great. And if you jump out and purchase it tomorrow and you didn't have the finances set aside for it, then other things in your business can falter, like paying your lights, your gas, your monthly expenses, your phone bill, uh, the things that you need to make your business flow. But if you prepare ahead of time and begin to save those funds ahead of time, then that next year when you're ready, now you can make that purchase and it doesn't affect or hurt anything in your business. Uh, at that point, it helps your business to grow to the next level. So change your morning routine, guys. Get your budget together. Get you know, Just think about it and focus on it for 2020. The next thing I want to say is um, art at least one book per month. Meaning read at least one book per month challenge. Like It's called an art at least one book per, per month challenge. And I read on it, and what they do is um, you want to learn new things. Because how can I uh, get on here and teach you guys new things if I haven't read new things? I know you just don't want to hear about Erica Lynn every day. <laughs> you want to hear about the things of the world, things that can make a difference in your life. So in case you're falling behind in your reading goals, this is a good time for you to compromise. For, I'm sorry, for you not to compromise and stick to at least one book per month. Uh, until the end of the year and um, just to pick up six books that you think you would like and then read each one of them um, you know every month so pick up books that will be useful for you say you want to learn how to garden get a gardening book I want to learn how to make homemade macaroni and cheese <laughs> I tried mm, 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 mm. your girl was not very good at it but the one thing that I can say about it is um, I'm a person that needs to go with the measuring cup. I know that's not the way that most people do it, but I'm from that school where I need an exact recipe with the exact measurements for me to make something. And everybody that has always taught me from my mom, my sister, even my niece, she's like 21 years old and can make a heck of a macaroni and cheese. They just go by eye and by taste. And I learned, what I learned about myself is that I cannot make macaroni and cheese by just tasting and touching and feeling it. Yeah, I need a recipe. So that's one of my goals for 2020. Get a recipe book and actually read the recipes and actually do the cook the food, the different meals, because I want to be successful to us. <laughs> Exceptional uh, in 2020. And perhaps one day um, I'll come to you guys live and we'll be in the kitchen cooking one of the meals that um, I got out of my new cookbook. <laughs> but for you guys, anyway, pick six books that you will find to be helpful for you. Something that you wanted to learn. Um, not just a good story, but good stories are great. But pick six books that um, will give you knowledge base. So if you wanted to know how to, 
get your business to the next level. Then get a book about um, entrepreneurship. There's a book that I want to get called The Principle. I know you guys seen Puff Daddy and what's his name? Ray Aglio, whatever. Um, he, they've been promoting his book. And he's like this billionaire and he give you principles into business and things like that. So that's one of the books that I find interesting in reading. And then Damon John, he writes books. So I want to get a book by Damon John and read whatever it is. Because I just find Damon John to be exceptional. You know the guy from Shark Tank. I don't know. But I feel that he has some knowledge that I can gain from reading some of his materials. Uh, and then there's a couple other books that I'm going to get. And that's my goal. Every month, read one of those books. And you guys will know how you know if I read one of the books. Because I'll be on here kicking some game. <laughs> From the knowledge that I learned from the book. What did you say? Uh, get my mother. And okay. <laughs> That's right. So, um, and and so that will be one of the things that we want to do in 2020. Do the book challenge. Read a book each month. The next thing we want to do is declutter that specific part in your house. Ladies and gentlemen, you guys know that you got an area in your house that needs to be decluttered. I'm not going to tell nobody your business. <laughs> but there is always an area somewhere in your house that needs to be decluttered. Whether it's the closet, whether it's the um, whether it's the living room, whether it is um, a corner and a space in your house that just needs to be decluttered. You know what? One of the things, you know how we all have that junk drawer? Everybody got a junk drawer in their house, raise their hand. Okay, well, give me a like. <laughs> Give me a thumbs up or like a click or heart or something uh, for all those who have junk drawers in their house. I'm trying to read. Uh, okay. <laughs> and um, in, um, in that space, for me, that, that junk drawer is really cluttered because it's things that I'm looking for and I got to like, um, I got to like shuffle everything around to just find what I, what I need and... That's just not, um, that's not what I want. So that one drawer, I want to declutter. Um, I want to take everything out the drawer and put everything back in nice and neat and throw away the things that I'll never use. And that junk drawer is stuff that's probably been in there ever since you moved in your house and you created that junk drawer. So that's one of the things that I want to declutter, um, is cleaning out my house and I mean cleaning out that junk drawer in 2020 I've already started doing my laundry and I've already like organized because when my daughter came back into the country I knew that I had to make space for her and make it comfortable so I've already started decluttering parts of my house in 2019 but that is one thing for me that I want to declutter is that junk drawer <laughs> it look like they say in church amen amen <laughs> Next, I want you guys to plan something big for 2020. You know, you should end 2019 and start 2020 with something that you're going to look forward to. And I think that planning something big, a big project for the next year, is the best thing that you could do to give yourself some motivation. Uh, this can be like something that writing a book. How every, not I want to say not everybody, but a majority of the people I know, they want to write a book. So you can plan that in 2020, I'm going to write a book. Going on a trip, volunteering, planning your wedding for those of you guys who are engaged and looking forward to it. Congratulations, by the way. But you can plan your wedding in 2020. Um, you can get a new job or start a new hobby. But as soon as you have that thing pre-planned or that what you want, have it pre-planned, you will have all the tools you need in 2020 to start working on that project and you can start brainstorming and it's already done so plan you something big in 2020 like um for me i am going to complete book number two because book number one is complete and my major project is complete so with the project my plan for 2020 is unleashing the project in 2020 i've already been unleashing the project behind the scenes and growing the and whatever but releasing the project on a major scale in 2020 that's my goal also um planning something big instead of doing our annual trip to taiwan like last year i took all the kids and we went to taiwan and we had a blast this year the kids and i want to go to uh maldives and so we're going to continue to plan that trip in 2020 
Um, and so there's a lot of things that, I, that I'm going to do in 2020. And as you see, you guys, in 2019, my plan was to do seven trips. And I almost made it to number seven. But after number six, I had to redirect some things in my in my personal life, in my business. And so I couldn't take that last trip. And I could have just jumped on the road and drove out of town for the weekend. Because technically that would have been a trip. But my core focus was focusing on one step beyond you and the things that I had to do. So plan something big for, you, for yourself in 2020. Now, this next one is something that we all probably falter to every January 1st. You know, I, I say take a 30-day fitness challenge. Because what happens is you get in the gym on January 1st and you like, I can lose weight, I got this, da 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 da, da. And then February, you stop working out. But if you start yourself out with little challenges like 30-day challenge, then you complete that 30-day challenge, then you set another challenge for yourself. So take a 30-day fitness challenge. Basically commit yourself to exercise for 30 days in a row. The intensity should vary depending on how comfortable you feel with the exercise. But even taking a walk in the morning, you know, you should feel like you've accomplished something. You felt you feel like you did a big milestone when you're actually able to do it all um, for a whole month. So if taking a walk in the morning, it's this lady when I'm out the door, when I leave out here, it's this lady. It don't matter what time of year it is. I see her with her coat on or whatever, and she's walking her two dogs. Even though the dogs are walking to go and use the bathroom, but that's good exercise for her. Because she could easily be like I was. When I when I was just open the door and let the dog run in the <laughs> backyard, use the bathroom, open the door and come back. So taking the dog for a walk is not just for the dogs, it's for yourself as well. To get some exercise, you know, and feel better about yourself. So this challenge can kickstart your routine and make you enter into 2020 with an established habit. So start out 2020 with the great habit. I'm going to start out 2020 with um, with establishing that 30-day fitness challenge. So if you guys will do this fitness challenge with me, then we can get it started. And every day for 30 days, and I hate posting this stuff on social media because the one day that I slip off or can't do it, I feel like, oh my God, I let everybody down. But January 1st, I'm going to start the 30-day challenge. I'm going to work out in some capacity every day for 30 days. And I'm going to go live or see you guys post a picture or something so you know that I'm being consistent. So join me. I invite you guys to join me for that 30-day challenge as well. So, you know, give me a thumbs up. Say, hey, Erica, I'm with you on a 30-day challenge. And I'll drop a post in between between now and January 1st to let you know. But I encourage you guys to join me on the 30-day challenge of fitness. Yay! <laughs> uh, again, we talked about, <coughs> excuse me, we talked about getting six books that you want to read um, in 2020. But I also put on here, learn how to cook five new recipes. So that goes in one of my books, the cookbook. But I do want to learn five new recipes. I want to learn how to make more than just macaroni and cheese. I can cook, yes. But can I get in there and put my foot in the food and cook like the major soul food that we grew up on and our grannies have made? No, I cannot. That's what happens when you have several children and the last child, you spoil the last child. And the last child don't know how to cook. And when she try to get in there to learn how to cook, you know, you know, when somebody is in the kitchen uh, teaching you good morning. Um, when somebody is in the teach in the kitchen um, teaching you something and you're not doing it right. And they just say, let me show you. Then they just take over. Let me do it. The next thing you know, the food is done. Everything is done. If you never actually really learned how to do it, because somebody takes over for you and do it for you. So. In 2020, I'm actually going to learn five recipes that I've cooked. And I'll make sure I post pictures on my Instagram of the five new meals that I've learned out of the cookbook that I'm going to buy when I purchase the six books for 2020. Okay? So, you don't need to go overboard with cooking skills. But mastering five recipes in six months should be easy enough. I don't think that's a hard thing for me to ask you. Give yourself enough time for the whole trial and error, uh, error process 
and make it makes you feel more confident that you can actually cook and don't need to order food as much as most people usually do. Because I heard Uber Eats is a big business where um, you go or you order your food and the guy comes and deliver it. And like now you never even have to go out of the house and you can order more than what the quote unquote regular delivery was pizza and all those kind of things. Um, but so that is something that I encourage you to do. And that will be uh, <laughs> that will be number eight. Um learn how to cook five new things um in 2020 and see for me i have goals of why not only do i just want to learn how to cook 20 new, new things for myself but i want to host dinner parties because when 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 one set beyond you blows and it's going to blow when my new projects go to the next level i don't want to necessarily have to hire a chef to come and cater i want to invite others to come and i want to host like dinner parties and and um, just do different things, you know. I want to find my Boaz and get married eventually. And my husband, he don't want to just eat something regular and boring because that's how marriage and relationships get born. That's just my opinion. But I want to do something different than I've ever done before. And I just want to make sure that I make me happy as well as make my mate, mate happy in 2020. So I'd like to ask you guys, post something um, down below. You know, what is one of the things that you want to learn how to do in 2020? Or what are several things that you want to learn how to do in 2020? I'd like to know. And we can discuss the things that uh, you want to do in 2020. <laughs> you know, I'm just so excited about um, where God is taking me. Because I really had to, first of all, I feel like in order for you to go to the next level sometimes, you have to make sure that your foundation is solid. So all the things that you don't think about matters, it matters. Like getting your finances in order. When you are um, starting a business, make sure you understand that flow of the business cycle. Because before you add on something great or larger to what you have, you understood the basics. So a lot of times, well, I know you guys remember me here and talking about the process. But as you go through the process and to get to the end of the process, you got to understand the beginning first. You got to understand, you know, how to make your business flow. And, and if your business becomes successful tomorrow and you get all of these new clients and, you know, um, just say, for example, people that want to be successful. I'll tell you like this. Say you want to go on uh, Ellen DeGeneres and you want to um, talk about your new book. Or talk about the new product that you have. Or talk about, oh, you selling this. And you know if you go on Ellen DeGeneres, you're going to get all these people calling you. All these people trying to purchase your merchandise. So the one thing I want you to think about is, if you went on Ellen tomorrow or went on Oprah tomorrow and people wanted to purchase what you had to offer, are you set up to handle the capacity of the volume of things that's going to come at you if you went on Ellen DeGeneres? So think about it. And when you think about it, that should help you shape what you want or shape what you're going to do or your next move. So that means that you have to go through a process. So you don't want to go on Ellen DeGeneres and advertise something. And then when people start calling you, you don't have the system set up in place to handle the volume of people that call you or go after that merchandise. I remember when Kylie, is that Kylie? Yeah, Kylie Jenner, I think that's the youngest daughter, when she launched her first makeup kit. She had no idea that she was going to break the internet. That first day, she launched that very first makeup kit. She broke the internet. The, inter the, the systems that they had in place did not have the capacity to handle the volume of people that went on the internet when it opened and when it released and purchased her uh, lipstick kits. So she learned that what she needed to do so now they needed to go back and redirect the website or whatever and fix it and add stuff to handle the volume of people that um that came on to purchase her lipstick kits so i hope this makes sense to you guys i mean it's we're going into 2020 i hope you guys are so excited we just had a wonderful christmas how was your christmas man i'm i, I i'm on that high appeal right i'm always <laughs> i'm always excited friday morning because excuse me it's the end of the week. I've I've focused on my plans or things that I had to do for the week, and I look forward to the weekend. And not to mention, I took the week off for Christmas and relaxed and unwind and just had a great time. 
in writing out things for me for 2020. But those of you who are interested in booking me to speak at one of your events, I'm an awesome, awesome, phenomenal speaker. I get on stage, I make you laugh, I make you think we have an awesome time. My team will be dropping some short videos so you guys can actually see your girl in action. But if you know, if you need, or if you know someone who is interested or need a motivational speaker that's going to make you laugh, cry, and think about some things, then I'm open for bookings. You guys can call me at 888-443-1112. Or you can go on my website at www.com one step beyond you.com i'm always available i have my team and my system in place to handle the handle the volumes of calls so make sure that you call your girl because um i'm ready for 2020 i spent 2019 prepare i spent all of 2019 preparing for 2020 so i am looking forward to you guys so they say a referral is the best way to go so please refer your girl out and if you need to say erica we need to see you speaking live just message me I'll shoot you a video so you can see your girl rocks. But again, you can find me on Instagram. That's one step beyond you. You can find me on um, YouTube at one step beyond you. And of course, most of you are watching me on Facebook at one step beyond you. But don't forget about the booking button. I want you guys to book yourself on my show. In 2020, I love to share your story. I want you guys, people to be inspired by your story, by your business startups. Just anything that you want to share and it's a great fit for the audience. Um, just go to Facebook. One step beyond you and hit the booking button. So I'm looking forward to see all the inquiries for people who's hitting the booking button to come on my show for 2020. You know, it's been a fantastic morning, you guys. And this is our last show before we're going into the new year. So I want you to take some of these great things into 2020. Declutter your life. Declutter your house. Make some wonderful decisions and actually stick to it. And I'm looking forward to see all of you all joining me in the 30-day challenge. And God bless you guys. And I'll see you in 2020. And just remember, it only takes just one step beyond you. God bless you. See you in 2020. Only one step, one step, one step beyond you. Only one step, one step, only one step, one step.